Uh, my name is Anupam. I'm from IBM Research. Uh, we do technical research at IBM. Um, I'll be talking about the Spoken Web project, as uh, Mohit mentioned. Uh, before talking about the project, I'll talk, talk about some statistics and then dive into the motivation behind this project. So 30% people of the world, do, only 30% people of the world access internet today. Rest 70% do not. Many of us may know it, many of us may not. But 70% people, people of the world have never accessed a website, never sent an email, never searched on Google, never liked anyone on Facebook. They have been just away untouched by the information revolution, which has been around for more than two decades. In India, the numbers are even worse. 8.4 percent access internet in India. More than 90 percent of people of the people of India do not access internet. They are not online. So let's look at the reasons for why this could be happening. One of them is affordability, for sure. Most of the people of the world today live on less than two US dollars a day. So of course, they cannot buy a computer, so they do not have internet access. Many of them cannot read and write. So even if they have a computer, it's of no use to them because they need literacy. To, they need to know how to read and write to access a website or send an email. And the third is relevance. So uh, for big cities in India uh, and other developing regions, uh, Train schedules, bus timings are there all online, right? But for small villages, local bus schedules are not there. For local farmers, crops in the local markets, they, they do not know the prices of them just because the information is not there online. And it's not there online because of the simple fact that there's no audience for it, right? Since people do not access internet, so no one cares to make a website for them. So the third point is relevance. There's no relevant content for them, so they're not online. So now let's talk about um, a very different technology. Mobile phones, the penetration is 87% across the world and it's growing as we speak. So the mobile phone penetration is growing, but internet penetration is not growing as much as mobile penetration. Even if people are illiterate, they can speak in their own language and they can talk on their phones. So here are the two axioms based on all these statistics. So spoken web is based on these two axioms. The first one is since everyone has mobile phones, almost everyone, Phone is a very promising platform for any technology for these kinds of people. Since they cannot read and write, speech is a compelling medium. Almost everyone can speak in their own language. So maybe we can do something using these two and create a technology for these people who do not have access to information right now. So right now, computers and literacy are barriers between these people and information. So let's bypass this somehow. So, if I, so sooner or later, these people will become literate. But we, want, we do not want them to be away from information revolution since it's already been two decades. So, so, so now the idea behind Spoken Web is that whatever a laptop or a computer has done for the developed world, we expect the same for a phone to do for the developing world. So we've tried to build something like the World Wide Web in the telecom network. So just like you have a website, Spoken Web has a concept of a voice site. And a voice site can be accessed from any phone. The phone doesn't need to have a data connection. It doesn't need to have internet. It doesn't need to be a smartphone. A voice site can be accessed from a regular landline, from a regular mobile phone. Even the cheapest mobile phones can access a voice site just by dialing a number. So a website has a URL, like IBM.com, Google.com. Uh, but a voice site has a number. So every voice site has a unique number, and you can just pick up your phone and call the voice site and access it. And uh, on the other end, there is no human. It's, it's just a machine. It's a speech recognition system, which is taking your inputs either from keypad or through speech. So you can just say, and it will just recognize it and give back input. And, and the data behind is a huge amount of data, which might be created by people all around us who might be using the voice sites. So the data is being uploaded by people and being consumed by people. So let's see an example of how it works. So suppose there's a village entrepreneur who goes out and gets important information in the village. He gets the train schedules at the train station, local crop prices in the market, and he notes everything in his diary. And then he calls up a voice site and uploads all this information. Now when he's doing it, he's doing it in his local language, local dialect, and local accent. And a voice site is created with a unique number. So now if someone wants to access this voice site, they can just go, go and call up and access it. So this was an example in one of our pilots that we did in South India. 
where people could just access any information on a voice site. So, so this was an example of just one kind of voice site. So similarly, we have lots of websites, right? We can also imagine lots of different kinds of voice sites doing lots of different things. And these red arrows that you see across the voice sites, so how about linking all the voice sites together when we have so, much, so many of them? So these red arrows are actually called voice links. They are enabled by this uh, protocol uh, called HSTP, Hyper Speech Transfer Protocol, that transfers the call and the context of the call from one voice site to another. So similarly, we can go from one voice site to another, do transactions, uh, call, get information, upload information, and do different kinds of things. So we have done 10 pilots in different developing regions of the world, and we've got some really interesting results. In fact, uh, our first pilot was in Andhra Pradesh, uh, uh, in South India, and uh, we had uh, a small village where we just created a voice site for people and told about the voice site to people. And the interesting thing was we just told about this voice site to four and five people in the village. At the end of the pilot, after nine months, we saw that there were six and a half thousand people calling the voice site, and the voice site received 114,000 calls. That's 1,14,000 calls. So, and the interesting thing was that the most common section of the voice site was aware when people could upload their ads. So uploading here means just by talking on the phone and, up and saying something, and it gets recorded on the server. So uh, in the ad section, what happened was uh, anyone could upload their ads for providing their services. For example, if I'm a plumber, I can just uh, call up the voice site and say, I'm a plumber, I live in this place, uh, this is my phone number, why don't you call me and avail my services? And so he gets most customers out of it. In fact, there was one guy who recorded his matrimonial ad. In fact, when we, when we talked of ads, we didn't think of those kinds of ads. And this guy actually recorded it 17 times to get it right. And just after he recorded it, it was just perfect. There was one guy who recorded another ad saying that this guy is not as good as he claims. <laughs> yeah. so, so people were using it as a, as a social space, like Facebook or Orkut, you know, something that we also didn't think of. So the community itself evolved different use cases out of the system. And there are lots of other pilots. I won't cover all of them uh, due to interest of time. But we have lots of research papers. We discuss a lot of them. Uh, so this one was in India, and there we have been doing in uh, uh, Brazil and South Africa, uh, parts of US uh, and other places, yeah. So anyone can also create a voice site. Uh, so for example, uh, if, I, <clears throat> so if, uh, if I am a farmer and I want to uh, get my own voice site, I do not know anything about voice servers, anything about speech recognition, I don't know even how to read and write, right? So we have made the procedure to create a voice site as easy as accessing a voice site. So there's a platform called VoiGen, where we, and it's just like another voice site. So you call this platform VoiGen by dialing a number, since it's a voice site. And it helps you create your own voice site. So it, it'll ask you what welcome message do you want, what prompts do you want, and it'll just create a voice site with you and give you a unique number. And that number is the URL for you, and you can just call up and access that voice site. So we have been testing it with tens of thousands of users across the world. People have been searching, navigating, browsing across all voice sites just over the regular phone. And, and these people do not know how to read and write. They do not have a computer. They do not have to buy anything that they do not have already. And still, they have been, made, they have, they have been able to access the information that they were away from. And we hope to grow it more in the future. Yeah, that was it. Thanks.